Welcome back, Stasa23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and this is the Amazon Knife of the Month, and for those of y'all who are just getting uh, started with my channel, I try to find a knife uh, that uh, looks like a good value, or a knife that I've never seen before that I want to try out, or a company, and sometimes they're great, sometimes they're huge pieces of turd. So, let's find out what this guy is. Uh, this is the CRKT sub-branded with Ruger knives or Ruger firearms. Here you go. The standard CRKT box, but just has the Ruger stuff on it. <coughs> this is the R3802KLCK. LCK standing for Lightweight Compact Knife, and that it is. This knife uh, comes in at $27. <laughs> it is a Matthew Lurch design. He's done several designs with CRKT, like the RTD with the field strip technology that I reviewed not too long ago on the channel. I'll try to leave a link to that video. And he's just a custom knife maker that I like a lot of his designs. <laughs> um, Let's get some specs out of the way. You have a seven and a quarter inch length or 18.5 centimeters. You have a four inch handle or 105 millimeters. You have a 3.5 inch grip area or 89 millimeters. <clears throat> you have a 3.2 inch blade or 82 millimeters. You have a 2.9 inch cutting edge or 72 millimeters. Let's get this guy closed up. You have 0.47 uh, on your thickness, so it's it's underneath the the half inch average. Very nice, or 12 millimeters. <clears throat> the widest portion from here to here is 0.89 inches, or 23 millimeters. Your stock thickness on this guy is coming in at 0.127 inches, or 3.3 millimeters. <clears throat> The behind the edge thickness is 18,000, so it's nice and thin behind the edge. They achieved this by uh, giving it a hollow grind, and it, that would make it 0.45 millimeters behind the edge. I'm trying to do both measurements because I know I do have uh, viewers in in other areas besides the U.S. that don't use that our measuring system. <coughs> this this guy comes in at 2.62 ounces so it's nice and lightweight that's what really draw drew it to me for having a you know pretty full size at seven and a quarter inches <coughs> and you know nice and slim compact kind of checked a lot of boxes for me but let's get a closer look at it you have a black coated blade not sure what the coating is uh, we call this a uh, reverse tanto or a worn cliff shaped blade excellent for utility task and um, you know, getting in, like using this, this portion right there to, to pierce into a box and you're only, you know, it's only going in that much. So I use that a lot. And then also for like detailed, if you need to, you know, cut out some nice intricate stuff, like if I want to cut this square out, that, that nice little precise point helps out a lot. Um, you do have some added strength because you have full thickness all the way up until this, the uh, tip portion. Uh, let's see, you, like I said, you do have a hollow grind on this guy, so you are able to achieve those thinner grinds, um, but then it comes to a full thickness right up in this area, but being it's not super, super thick stock, it, it still slices good from all the stuff I've cut up. Um, you have this sharpening jaw right here and also if you have you know thinner fingers like mine which is still cutting it close you can use it as a forward finger jaw but uh, you know on this to be air on the side of caution I would say that's just a sharpening jaw or be careful if you use it <coughs> as a forward finger jaw you have no jumping to speak of but you do have the flipper tab that acts as a guard right there in this jaw area so you are locked in pretty nicely there um, let's close this guy up. You have these uh, GRN handle scales. You have uh, T8 pivot, T6 body screws. 
somewhat decorative pivot with that little uh, outer circle on there. You have a GFN backspacer, basically this glass reinforced nylon for anybody who didn't know that. <clears throat> you have this milled pattern in here that gives you a little bit of traction. I uh, mean, it's, it's not excellent, but it gives you some. Uh, let's flip it over. You have a perfectly executed deep carry pocket clip. Those screws are countersunk. CRKT tends to do a good job on that. The retention on this pocket clip is pretty good. Let's see what it looks like in your two types of pockets. You got your flat pockets, kind of like what I'm wearing today. And it completely disappears in the pocket. Well done if you like that. Going in that tactical theme. And it's going to disappear in your slanted pockets as well. Good retention. Goes in and out of the pocket very easily. Um, the... The knife rides on, let's see if you can see that, phosphor bronze washers and that paired with a nice detent and a well executed flipper tab, you have a very nice action on here, or I'd say a little bit better than good. Um, they did a good job with the flipper tab, they have jimping, yeah, if my camera would want to focus tonight, yeah, jimping all around it so if you want to do your light switch you have jumping over here if you want to do your push button it's rounded so it's not going to hurt and you have the traction on the jumping as well so like i said your light switch the action is good because that detent's good and the push button it rockets out even better um, you have <coughs> coated stainless liners it's going to be hard to show let's see if my light no my light's not around your lockup is right around 50% and absolutely no up and down. Mm, I could muscle maybe a little bit of side to side, but it's probably the GFN flexing a little bit. Nothing that concerns me at all. Um, <coughs> it's rather easy to disengage that lock bar because you do have a nice cutout right there that allows you to access that along with the jimping on the top of the lock bar right there gives you traction to disengage it <laughs> um, there's no no skeletonizing weight reducing holes in there at all um, let's see we're gonna get a few size comparisons out of the way and then I'm gonna talk about some of the things that I would like to see changed or uh, or gripes or complaints. Another knife that has a lot of resemblance to this but is a thumb stud knife is the Reich, let's see, the P865-B. As you can see, they got similar lines, but the Reich is a half inch longer. And like I said, is a thumb stud knife. This is G10 FRN. Um, but different price points as well. This this guy's coming in at $35. This guy's coming in at $27. But I will say, <laughs> I would have loved to see for that little price difference, I would have loved to see you know G10 or at least skeletoni skeletonization because let me show you something. You got this bigger knife here, about the same profile, and I'm not sure, but it feels like the Reich is lighter and like I said, they're pretty much the same profile, about the same thickness. Let's put the Reich on top. Try not to cut myself. Yeah, about the same thickness. You got G10 here. Let's see. How did I get to grams? 2.62 ounces. 2.44. See, you got a bigger knife. But, <clears throat> like I said, I don't know if I said it just now, they were able to achieve that lighter weight because, for one, you have skeletonized liners in there. I see the holes. But also, you have the inset liners and you have a much thinner, flimsier lock. Even though, you know, you won't put this knife through, you know, anything hard enough to make that lock fail. But as you can see... Not by much, but you do have a little bit thicker of a lock or liner. 
than you do on this knife. But like I said, for the price differences of these two, I would have liked to, I would have definitely paid the $35 for this guy with, you know, the all the stuff this this one has. You got the 14C28N, you got the G10, and you got the skeletonized. But I will say, you know, using these two, this one, I've had more pleasure using this one. It's just, I don't know, size and everything. It just, it feels better. The flippers uh, works good on this guy. That's just my preference. <clears throat> um, let's see, the next one, kind of in that slim, slim and sleek, another CRKT, is the Crossbones. The Crossbones is a good bit bigger. It's a, well, it's a half inch bigger, same size as the Reich. Uh, but this one's a, this one's a good bit more expensive. Um, let's see. Next one is, I think, almost the exact same size, is the uh, K-Bar Dozer Hunter. No, not. It's a little bit smaller, about a quarter of an inch smaller. Uh, let's see the QSP Parrot, another excellent Amazon find, great budget knife. I think this guy was twenty bucks, full forty C G ten, excellent knife for the money. Uh, these are exact same size, so if you have the Parrot, you'll know how long the uh, LCK is. Another another all star, the Honey Badger. These two are also the same size, or same length at least. You could fit this whole knife inside the Honey Badger though. Another, another all-star. I can't wait to do that video. And one more last one, common knife a lot of people own, Spyderco Delica. And those two are almost exact same size. It looks like the LCK might have, a, yeah, LCK has about an eighth of an inch longer blade. And probably, yeah, it has more cutting edge as well. So let, let me talk about a few gripes, complaints, <laughs> suggestions. I don't know, whatever you want to call them. Um, first, I would have liked to see a flat spot underneath that pocket clip, kind of like Spyderco does underneath their uh, bi-directional GFN handles. Just makes it to going in and out of the pocket a lot easier. Uh, like I said about this knife, I would have loved to see some lightning holes in there. I know it's already light, but you know, put those holes in there, and those holes would have helped balance this knife out. Because if you're at there, you're a little uh, handle heavy because of those full stainless liners. Um, another thing that just uh, Shabazz talks about it as well. I don't really understand. You have a three and a quarter inch blade. That just doesn't really make sense. I mean, either go to a three and a half inch blade or a, a sub three inch blade. You know, make it legal. Either make it legal in more areas or just go all out and make it bigger. Just it just sucks to see it. You know, right above that that law restriction. You know, taking it, uh, taking the option off the table for some. Some people with crazy knife laws. Um, another thing that I, not, you know, that I would have liked to see, I would have liked to see an uncoated version of this in the same blade shape. They they have another LCK, or they call it LCK. I don't know why, but it's a drop point and it's uncoated. But I like this blade shape. It's good utility. I don't understand why they didn't just make this one uncoated as well, but. That's their decision. I guess this is the tactical version. All oh, murdered out. Um, and one more last nitpick is this this sharpening choil, forward choil. Uh, I mean, you could they could have extended it sixteenth, maybe an eighth at the most, and it would have been uh, a, a forward finger choil for everybody's fingers, not just skinny fingers. Uh, but like I said, it's not hurting the functionality of the knife. I'm I, I'm still glad to see that you know they don't have any crazy uh, edge termination right there. Uh, you know they did a good job. This thing came blazing sharp and slices really good as well. So 
this is a, a thumbs up. Uh, definitely one that I can recommend, especially at, at what is it, $27. <laughs> You're not breaking the bank. Um, you're getting a nice slim, sleek, lightweight profile knife. It, it does have stiff competition. You know, this is, you know, this is really steep competition here. As far as materials go, you know, this is the better buy as materials go, but uh, I get more enjoyment out of this knife. And it's kind of crazy to say because I'm not a huge CRKT fan just because their QC is not really the best in the world. Uh, another big competitor, the QSP knives. They've been really surprising me lately. Uh, I need to pick up a few more of their models. And the old Honey Badger. It's another, another great option. And an old option. Th this... The K Bar uh, Ultimate Hunter, or no, the K Bar Hunter. This is a great knife for I think 15 bucks I paid for this. But there you go. There's some options. All these were Amazon buys. Yep, all of them. These were all Amazon month, Amazon of the month buys, and got lucky on all of them. They all turned out to be great knives for what I paid. All right, guys and girls, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, if this video comes out before I've had my 2,000 subscriber giveaway, you definitely want to be a subscriber, and you definitely want to turn on that bell notification on side of the subscribe button because I promise you're not going to want to miss it. I don't know if I announce it on this channel or not, but... My giveaway is going to be a group, a joint giveaway with my good buddy Zelric42 here on YouTube. He missed his one of his last milestones, so we decided we were going to do a, a epic, epic giveaway. And the prize, the, the prize package, I think is going to well, it's going to at least be in the, about the thousand dollars worth of gear, knives and gear. So you're not going to want to miss it. I promise. You just got to give us a little bit of time because we're uh, still waiting on some of the sponsors. Like I said, this video might come out after. I don't know. But if not, just wanted to let y'all know where it stands. Waiting on some of the, some of the sponsors' prizes and uh, trying to get everything uh, organized between both of, both of our channels. All righty, guys and girls. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.